Hello everyone, Troy here. Uh, well, it's been a long road, but we're finally here. Uh, I'm waiting for just a, a few more parts uh, for uh, the completion of this pulse width modulator, but I just wanted to give you a quick update. Uh, those parts that I'm waiting for, by the way, are just the uh, dual fan that I'm going to use on the top. Um, I wanted to avoid using a fan, um, but uh, with implementing some of the uh, protection uh, circuitry that I have, the, the uh, fan became uh, necessary for cooling. Um, but I'm going to do that a little, uh, a little different. Uh, the fan I'm going to use is a dual fan, and uh, one of the fans will uh, blow air right onto the heat sink chassis, uh, lowering its temperature, and the other one will uh, blow in the other way or expel that the heat away from the uh, chassis so uh, but I'm also going to use a um, NTC thermistor uh, to uh, have a temperature control for the fan so it would only come on um, when it's necessary and then in the instructions with the pulse modulator uh, you will find instructions for uh, this is something that you would do on your own just buy like a um, some uh, two inch uh, rubber uh, tubing and just run it out to the front of your grill on your vehicle and just have an elbow pointing right to the top of the uh, pulse width modulator and that will keep it cool while you're driving. So the only time the fan uh, should come on is when you're if you're idling uh, and you don't have that air coming in and uh, then you would need it. Um, I'm going to just walk up to the uh, camera to give you a, um, a view of what's going on inside the chassis. Um, in the past, um, someone had commented about the, um, um, the current capa uh, handling capability of the uh, traces on my circuit board. What they didn't understand, and I explained back then, that um, if you can look in here, there's two copper bus bars in, inside. Now, a lot of times with uh, uh, circuit board designs for, for high current, they will use um, use a five ounce copper. Uh, you, you can use five ounce. Actually, you can use about three ounce if you're uh, using uh, if, if your current is 150 amps. You just have to have uh, uh, three ounce copper on the bottom, three ounce on the top. Uh, this copper in here, uh, this is separate from the circuit board. We actually, I, we fabricated this just, you know, with a break. And um, um, what it is, uh, this is 24 gauge copper. So actually, it would be the equivalent of using 20 ounce copper on a circuit board. So it's actually uh, capable of handling a greater current than that. But you can see where it's attached to these lugs here. Now, the connection on this uh, is different than other pulse width modulators that you've seen because the, you see here, you, now, you would have the input from your battery, 12 volts from your battery coming in here. Uh, that would go through, basically, the MOSFET. And it's not, a, it, it's not an ordinary MOSFET. It's uh, not one that I think it, most of you are probably familiar with but it's just called it basically a power switch and um, it will f the current will flow through that and then out to the cell positive so that's a little different you don't have the uh, the um, you don't have the uh, cell negative being connected to the pulse width modulator as with uh, others and uh, then this is uh, this connection here is the uh, switch battery positive uh, from your ignition, okay? And uh, and then of course uh, this would be, is be connected to chassis ground. So those are your connections. These two, of course, here need to be um, at least a four gauge uh, cable, um, and then these two can simply be 18 gauge, and that's fine. And then of course I'm going to move up again. This is the uh, circuit board, completed circuit board. And uh, originally, I was going to mount the uh, current sensor that I use for the high side, high side current sensing 
which by the way is uh, much better than the low side. Uh, low side is cheaper but it's not as accurate and so we actually uh, we're uh, measuring that current on the high side uh, of the uh, of the uh, power switch rather than the uh, low side. So it's it's uh, more costly, uh, but it's more uh, efficient way of doing it. Uh, so that's the circuit board. The entire you can see the entire bottom is one solid copper ground plane, and we've get all of our ground connections uh, from the uh, top of the of the circuit board are made there. And um, I'm just going to. Uh, basically what I was doing today is making sure everything fits and um, let's see here, it actually just goes in like that and I'm just going to attach the uh, face plate and um, I've got uh, the thermistor coming in the mail and that should probably be here by Monday and then once that gets here I will uh, attach that and um, the fans and then we'll hook it up to uh, the best I can do I have a uh, 120 amp load that I can run um, this and um, we'll show you guys it working under that load Now the um, the controls, the trimmers here, I've got one more than you're uh, normally accustomed to seeing, and I spoke of this in some earlier uh, videos, a feature that uh, so far I haven't seen on any other uh, pulse width modulator. It may be available, just not that I'm aware of. Uh, and right here you, you're going to have your uh, uh, trimmer for frequency, uh, for duty cycle, current limiting, and then for full back percentage. And uh, talk about that in some of the other videos. Now, the, I decided to go with the dip switch uh, for size. Um, and uh, you, in your instruction manual that will come with the pulse width modulator, it'll um, explain where to set these. And the, the main, what these are mainly for. Uh, the only other thing I have to add to this faceplate is right here there's going to be two 2.5 millimeter jacks and they're going to be for, for the, your uh, digital uh, multimeter probes and um, basically depending on where you have these uh, dip switches set you'll be able to measure your duty cycle, frequency and uh, current all with a, your uh, own personal uh, digital multimeter so you don't need a oscilloscope or any other type of uh, specialized measurement uh, equipment for doing that and um, I think that's a real benefit uh, um, we we do have the other model available where we will have uh, the actual LED meters available but it's you know it'll be at a higher cost and I just thought this was a way of getting something like this to you guys and, and still keeping the cost down. Uh, but it really takes the uh, guesswork out of uh, your setup. Uh, it makes it very easy um, and it's much more accurate uh, than the other. So it makes it a lot easier uh, to uh, set up your uh, um, your cell and the uh, pulse modulator uh, for hydrogen uh, production. Uh, one other thing about the um, the um, trimmers I, I didn't mention on the front I found these and what I really like about them they have the slots I don't know if you can see it or not but they have slots so you can use the uh, you know small mini uh, uh, flat head uh, screwdrivers or you can actually turn them I mean I'm, I'm able to turn it with my thumb and index finger any one of them and that really makes it a little easier uh, I, but I didn't want to go with regular larger knobs because they're more susceptible to vibrations and um, if you use a larger pot sensor. So anyway, uh, that's going to do it for now. Uh, we should, we'll, should definitely be running the, uh, the uh, test or shooting the last video next week, so stay tuned.
Take care.